for me and for the family, especially I think for Laura and for uh, Barry as well as myself, um, we're all very concerned about Jim as well. It seems so out of character that this would have happened, um, and it's hard to believe that um, that's what we're actually uh, seeing. Uh, so, you know, we're really trying to see, is anybody actually looking for Jim? When I spoke to Laura, um, his sister, last night at length, uh, two times, she expressed that um, you know the only results she could see from this is uh, Jim ending up coming in home in a body bag because um, either one, he was going to get profiled and someone was going to shoot him or something tar terrible has happened to him um, and maybe he was taken from the home. Um, you know, I went camping with Jim on a regular basis. He's not a survivalist. Everybody's out there talking about like he's some sort of survivalist. I mean, it's almost a joke. Uh, you know, Barry, myself, and Jim are all slightly overweight. And uh, we would go out with a guide and uh, we'd go to Yosemite. We had a regular trip out to Yosemite. Um, we'd go to the Ten Lakes region uh, camping. Um, but, you know, four days out, uh, we were all desperate for a hotel room and a shower and a bathroom, so I find it very hard. Um, the picture that you see with him lying on the ground was at 9,000 feet of elevation where, um, you know, he had crashed out after uh, two days of hiking. So uh, Tell me, um, Andrew, you know, I mean, it, it, there is this suggestion, and it's only a suggestion, there's so many unanswered mm -hmm. questions here, but a suggestion that he may have had some kind of unhealthy obsession with Hannah, this 16-year-old girl who he'd known since, I think, before she was even born, he'd known the family. Uh, do you think there's yeah, any credence to that theory? You know, there's always a possibility of something. And, you know, I work in mental health. I've been working in mental health for uh, 22 years. I own treatment centers. Um, I started in psychiatric care, and now I own uh, psychiatric, I mean, uh, substance abuse uh, facilities throughout um, uh, Washington, the West Coast, and California here in Los Angeles specifically. Um, you know, uh, there's always a possibility that somebody could have a break. There, I heard some rumors on the media that he had been smoking marijuana recently, and I know that that's a big topic lately on CNN. Mm -hmm. And there's always the possibility with the potency of marijuana these days that people could have drug-induced psychosis that might relate to some of this behavior. But it would have to have been an extreme event, um, something like that. It, it would have to have been some really mind-altering event that would uh, change his character so dramatically from um, the man that I know who is actually uh, someone who cares very deeply about people. Um, he had a lot of trauma in his life growing up. I know that um, both his parents were troubled. Um, there was a suicide involved with his mother and his father um, has a, a history. Um, some of which is, you know, personal that I've shared with him and, um, and he shared with me. Uh, and uh, whether that comes out over time, we'll see. But, um, you know, he, he was the one in the family um, that decided to make his life something more than just about, uh, you know, following the bad example of his parents. Jim was someone who always gave back. You know, when I heard, for example, that a dog was shot in the house, that's not Jim. You know, uh, Jim saw a cat that had been run over by in front of his house and he spent like the last of his paycheck uh, taking the cat to the vet and, uh, you know, trying to get the cat to uh, live. So he, he was a caring, compassionate person. Um, the stuff with Megan, you know, you, once again, you listen to the media carefully and you don't just listen to the sensationalism and you can hear the reporting where they say that um, he had set, made this comment to um, Megan about uh, you know, that uh, she was good looking and whatnot. But if you listen carefully, he talks very specifically about, um, and I know that there were other girls in the car, and he talks about not that she's just good looking, but that, that she's good looking for her age and other boys would like her. You, just, to clarify, Andrew, about him. just to clarify, Andrew, you, you mean Hannah, not Megan? I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, so it, 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 was, it was never about him. It was about he had a fatherly role with these children. Um, you know, the father was in Tennessee and um, he basically drove these uh, children around and took care of them. Um, and, you know, it was something that he was very proud of.